Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Thursday, January the 13th, 2022. This morning when I woke up, I checked the news and I found this on Four Thirds Rumors. Panasonic is struggling and only the focus on video can save them. Sounds pretty dire, doesn't it? And if you look at the chart, immediately the first thing you see is, wow, Panasonic has dropped from almost 100% of the market all the way down to around 5%, or around 5 to 8%. And that looks pretty bad, but first of all, let's take a closer look at this chart here. What does it show us? Well, it does show us from 2008 to 2021, and it shows us Sony, Canon, OM Systems, or Olympus, and Panasonic, and it's focusing on mirrorless sales. And again, it's just focusing on the Japanese market. So now let's take a closer look at what the information is telling us. We can see from 2008 to about 2010, 2011, they started off with about, well, pretty well close to 100% market share, and that was because nobody else was producing units. And then other contenders just started to come into the market. We have OM Systems that came on, then Sony started to produce, and of course, with more camera companies producing mirrorless systems, Panasonic doesn't have the entire market for themselves, and that market share dropped significantly from around around 100% down to about, well, sub 40%. And then Canon and Nikon start producing mirrorless cameras, and these, you gotta realize that Canon and Nikon, for the better part of this chart here, were the number one producers and sellers of ILC cameras in the world. So when they started moving over to mirrorless, uh, I think Canon started right around 2018 and Nikon about a year or two before that. Okay, Canon did have the EFM system and I keep forgetting about that one. So Canon did start in mirrorless a little sooner. And so once we see every single camera company making mirrorless cameras, well, let's take a look. And that looks right around, if we look around year 2012, that's when we see the market with all entrants in. And if we look at Panasonic's market share then, we can see that it's somewhere around 20%. And if we look at the end of 2012 or 2013, it's right around 13, 14%. And if we look at that from 2013 all the way through to 2021, we haven't seen a huge dramatic drop in Panasonic. Yes, it's still a significant drop going from 13% down to about 8%. But what have we really received in the market that's really excited people? Well, the Panasonic GH5 did excite a lot of people. We had the GH5S, but it's that much anticipated GH6 that's got a lot of people wondering what's coming out next. Now, some people in the comment section said, well, Panasonic only has a single mount. They only have MFT, and that's not true. We have full frame from the S series as well. So Panasonic has MFT, and full frame. Canon has APS-C in full frame. Nikon has APS-C in full frame. Fuji has APS-C and medium format. So pretty well all of the companies here have two different mounts or mount sizes. So MFT, APS-C, full frame, and medium format. But what is it that's really keeping Panasonic down here? I, 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 I've said this many times before. I do believe that the autofocus, it has been holding them back a little bit. I've seen some of the other comments on the Four Thirds site to talking about shouldn't focus on video and that that could be the problem. You know what, this argument's been going on with Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, everybody. Video is important. And if you produce a camera these days that doesn't have decent video, you're not gonna sell very well. Well, Panasonic, I would have to say, has one of the best set of video capabilities in any stills hybrid camera. However, if you're a single person show and you're not shooting in studio pieces like I am, then that autofocus system is a little bit more difficult to work. In a studio, I recommend using manual, but the problem is when you're a one person show, how do you properly set things up? Yes, you can put a dummy in a chair. Yes, you can have somebody else sit there. But again, you're adding complexity where somebody who has a reliable autofocus system like Sony, Nikon, <clears throat> excuse me, somebody has a reliable autofocus system like Sony, Nikon, or Canon, they can just switch it to autofocus and they don't have to worry about it. I produced well over 600 videos on this channel and I think only twice did the autofocus system screw up and for whatever reason it just completely locked and it wouldn't change so sounds like some sort of a bug. But two times out of 600 times, not a problem. Usually when I sit down in the chair I do this, I move back and forth 
and I listen for the clicking of the autofocus system, and I know that it's functioning. And that's the only quirk that I've had with Canon R5 is once in a while it just, for whatever reason, the autofocus says, I'm taking the day off. But outside of that, it's a highly reliable and trustworthy autofocus system. So if we put park the autofocus system aside for a minute, yes, we understand, even as fans of Panasonic, we understand that the autofocus system could be better. But outside of that, look at the capabilities we have with video. And Micro Four Thirds, let, let's not dump on Micro Four Thirds. From what I've seen with the GH5, it's comparable with any other APS-C camera out there, so it produces really, really good results. And then, of course, you've got their full-frame cameras, the S1 and the S1H. Now, the S1R I didn't really mention because, well, that's still hybrid-focused, although it does do some video. So what is it about Panasonic that hasn't captured the market share? Panasonic has been out there. They were the first, one of the first out there with a mirrorless camera, right up there with Sony. But unlike Sony, they haven't captured the market attention. And I, this is where I'd like to get some of your feedback. Are they adequately listening to their customers? I would say not, because if they were, their sales would be much higher than they are today. I would say they would have the same position as Sony would, and maybe Sony wouldn't be doing nearly as well, or they'd be splitting that market share between them. Right now, worldwide, Panasonic has 5% ILC camera sales. That's mirrorless and DSLRs. 5%. That's not very good. They're not growing, and in fact, for one thing this chart does show is that Panasonic, while they had that one bump there, hasn't really increased their market share at all. So what is it? Why are they not capturing the market attention? Yes, I did mention autofocus, but it's something else. There's, they're not capturing the market attention. Is it marketing? Are they not being able to market their cameras enough? What is it about Panasonic that has them in the basement dweller? And many of you thinking that's it for Panasonic. I, I do think that the five-year wait for the GH6 is way too much. If you like MFT or like APS-C, you like the Panasonic, you didn't mind the autofocus system because you could work with the manual focus or the autofocus was good enough. Waiting five years when you're seeing Canon come out with the R5, the R3, Sony with the Alpha 1, with the A7 IV, with the A7C, when you see Nikon with the Z6 and the Z7, and then they come out with the Z6 Mark II and the Z7 Mark II in the same time that we've had the GH5, and of course, the Nikon Z9. A lot is happening out there, and we're not seeing the same sort of excitement in Panasonic. We're not getting as many products being released. The S series I really liked, and I think it's very capable. That was two years ago, and since two years ago, we've seen some incredible cameras. Canon changed everything with the R5 in 2020. It leapfrogged the competition enough that everybody got their game out. Now we're seeing multiple 8K cameras. We're seeing multiple cameras in excess of 45 megapixels from the Z7 to the R5 to, you know, the Nikon Z9, the Sony Alpha 1 with 50 megapixels. I honestly think that they're not creating as much excitement. They need to release cameras a little bit more quicker. And for the S series, they better not wait five years. I don't think waiting five years is going to be good for the brand. And I'd be really nervous if I had an S series camera and it took five years because with more people leaving the market, moving to Canon and Sony, and I've seen comments from many of you saying, I, I can't take this wait anymore, I'm leaving. And for every one of you that was kind of on the fence, I said, no, just wait a couple of months. At least you'll see the specs and then make a decision. But many of you have already left. And this, the, the major reason for that, each of you have said, I'm tired of waiting. I'm tired of waiting when I see everything else that's coming to the market. And I understand that. I was in that position back in 2018, 2019. I was tired of waiting for Canon to come out with something. And when they came out with the EOS R, I looked at the EOS R and what Sony had at the time, and I just thought, wow, they can't even catch up to the competition that released cameras several years ahead, several years previously. Fortunately, well, not fortunately, um, if the A7S III had to come out, I would have bought that. If the GH6 had to come out and fix the autofocus system, I would have bought that. I was that ready to switch. But then in January, we started getting rumors of the R5, and I thought, well, if I can keep my lenses, that will save me a lot of money, especially with a 50 millimeter. It's a very expensive lens, the 1.2 on the EF and the RF. So 
I waited. And as I started this channel, I started seeing more and more rumors. So I thought, let's wait and see. And then we got rumors of the A7S III. And I, and I thought, well, Canon's coming out sooner. I don't have to switch ecosystems. I don't have to waste a lot of money on lenses. I ended up staying with Canon. But I think many of you that were with Panasonic now, you're feeling the same thing as how long can I wait? Well, one thing to be aware of, based on a video that Sean put out, who works for Lumix, he had a shirt that had 2226 on the back. So uh, however you read that, more or less looks like that. In February, we're going to get an announcement of the GH6 with full specifications. And at that point, wait and see what they are. And if you're happy with what Panasonic's put out at th that point and you're happy with the GH6, then stick with the ecosystem and enjoy the lenses you've already got. And the cost of just buying a body is great. But if you don't like the GH6, then that's the time to consider migrating over to another platform. And don't forget to consider the cost of migration because it's very, very expensive. But that's it for now. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. One last thing, though, please don't forget to like and subscribe or even comment. I always respond to comments and read comments, especially within the first few hours or after they've been published. But when you subscribe to my channel, I take it as a virtual pat on the back, and I very much appreciate it. This year, I only got about 3,500 subscribers or was 4,000 subscribers. The year before, I had like 22,000. I don't know. But I'd really love to get to 30,000 subscribers this year. So I can only do that with your help. And please, please click subscribe and like. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.